August 24th, 2021. I wake up with burning eyes, eyes strained by the previous night's overusage of my phone. A phone I used to browse corn and massacre my meat with it. I did it three times the previous day, and the last instance felt like only air came out instead of the birthing porridge. So as I laid on my mattress, I asked myself, where did it all go wrong? My relationship with the Devil's Tango has always been unorthodox. I first found out about it when my uncle and his friend were ranting about it when I was seven. Fear not, my uncle is only four years older than me. Somehow that doesn't make it any better. I know what sex is. The first time I actually saw people perform the human mating ritual was through a blue movie when I was ten. Ah yes, the perks of having a phone with internet connection. I wonder how earlier children are getting exposed to science films nowadays. But the problem didn't arise until 2013. The year I'd like to call the Chokening, Year 1. This was the year in which, you guessed it, when I started to beat my meat like it owed me money. And it was later that year that I realized that if I watched unholy motion pictures while performing the big choke, it feels much better. I think I can also pinpoint this year as when the problem definitely began because I got my circumcision the very same year and told myself stitches are temporary, but pain that viscous fluid from my third leg makes me feel like a deity for like 10 seconds. Everything is temporary, life is also temporary. And I beat my meat two weeks after getting my stitches, and definitely more times in the preceding weeks, despite being warned not to do it until six weeks. Or is it sex not to be done until six weeks? And ever since 2018, I have been mixing the big choke with blue movies almost on a nearly daily basis. Oh, who am I kidding? It's, it's every day, bro. bro. Which is partially why I've been mostly happy all this time without a girlfriend. Mostly. But now, I think I'm starting to see the side effects of using blue movies to pleasure myself for 8 years. Usually, when a person uses a lot of a drug frequently, the body does one or both of two things. The first is the body makes more enzymes that break down the substance quicker, and or it decreases the amount of sites called receptors that the drug can bind to and cause the action that it causes. This is known as tolerance. And when people have tolerance, the amount of drug that they need for it to take the desired effect is increased. Hence the reason why, for instance, cigarette smokers seem to be burning through more and more cigarettes a day. What does that have to do with the topic at hand? <laughs> Get it, topic at hand? The whole pump and dump is nothing but a big dopamine here. Dopamine, among other of its functions, is a pleasure neurotransmitter that makes things that feel good actually feel good. So, single player coitus while watching people doing multiplayer coitus flooding my brain with dopamine for so many years has made me bump up the frequency over years. Remember when I said I did it on a nearly daily basis? Well, now I do it on a daily basis. Sometimes multiple times a day, as stated in the introduction of this video. Well, at least I'm not dependent on the peak and beat. So after some introspection, I have come to the conclusion that I have a level of dependence towards PNM. In 2019, I tried to convince myself after hearing about NoFap that PNM isn't a problem by actually joining it, and I remember rationalizing myself into leaving it. A little later that year, I tried this little internet thing that's very obscure and not a lot of people talking about called No Not November. And not only did I fail that year, I also failed in 2020 as well. But who would blame me? In 2020, we were all pummeling our rods, right? Right? 
This continuous failing of my attempt to stop PNM for extended periods of time are proof of my dependence on the somatic action. The proof is further compounded by the withdrawal symptoms I get when a day passes without doing the self-deed. I would describe the symptoms but all I remember about them is that my concentration span is greatly affected because all I want to do is beat off and I find the slightest noises irritating and really want to isolate myself so I can beat off. I'm sure there's more withdrawal symptoms than that but that's all I remember about them because as of writing this video, I am, for a matter of fact, cooming. Masturbation. I am an addict, an addict, an addict, an addict, an addict, an addict. The National Institute on Drug Abuse says addiction is a disease. It says an addict uses a drug frequently and can't stop even when they know the negative consequences that come with taking the drug. I'm a PNM addict and that's because I do know the negative consequences of continuously beating off to unsanitary videos and yet I still continue. I know that doing this continuously and as frequently as I do will lead to dire consequences such as Whoa, 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 whoa. This video is getting way too not positive towards the topic I chose to talk about. When I make these perspective videos, I usually tailor them toward bringing forth reasons as to why I like something most people would say isn't good at all. And quite honestly speaking, I love PNM, okay? I love watching people do the deed while I do it to my to myself okay and here are some reasons why i like doing so number one it made me less depressed yeah, about my loveless teenage years as most people were hooking up with girls left right and center i got to really know myself i was already adept at playing alone with my imagination as a child so why not continue to do so as a hormonal teenager it made me feel less like a lonely girlfriendless loser and more of a happy boy whose balls went as blue as the sky, instead they were very undersized. It kept me out of trouble. That, 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 that's number two. While these boys and girls were doing the devil's tango, some of them had the brilliant idea of pulling out the camera and record the event. Sure, that, that, that didn't come back to bite them in their naked underage asses. Some of them became parents before they even finished school, which is a fate worse than death for me because I'm still a man child till this day. I, on the other hand, haha, get it? Another hand joke. These are very funny. <laughs> was getting asymmetrical biceps, which isn't as bad as venereal diseases and probably ending up in leg tube or having an essence of concentrated responsibility to look after. Number three, it's, it's very, very convenient. It's like Amazon. There's no denying that beating off is very convenient. When you want to do the, the, the devil's tango, you either have to have a companion or break the law to get it or break the law to get it while violating someone else's human rights. It's free coochie. While if you do single player stuff, all you need is yourself, your lotion and your device. Hell, sometimes you don't need either the notion or the device. You can just use your imagination. This is the convenience that you can't get anywhere else. Unless you resort to bestiality. Which also needs a lot of th things that you need to do. And it's also morally wrong to do it. Number 4. Um, in Cells Out Red Code Black Episode 3, the body of the now confirmed male has erectile dysfunction. And they fix that problem with Viagra. As you do. But the important thing is what comes after. The red blood cell who the show has been following throughout the series, who was quite fond of the little s sperm cells of fucking haploids, finds out that they might not be going into an egg or the fallopian tube at all. And that the man might be doing what he did just for the kicks of it. And then Red Boy gets sad and boom, the body gets infected by gonorrhea. My point on the summary of that story of that episode is that the red blood cell is stupid of course. Of course a lot of those cells are going to die before they reach the egg. Even if they do, one, 
or on a rare case 2 or an even rarer case 3 or on repeatedly rare cases as the numbers go up out of the many many birthing particle half cells are not going to survive to do that and even if the one or more that get into the egg they have many things that could happen to them for example a miscarriage or or even worse than a miscarriage which is living generally the point of the point of my previous point is that only, nothing is wrong with choking one or a billion out because it doesn't matter whether you spew porridge on a sock or on a birthing sack millions of cells are going to die anyway even if you remain with the bluest of balls they still die also masturbation means all the pleasure minus the complexities of sex gonorrhea syphilis cauliflower blue waffle syndrome uh uh, 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 special fried rice. <laughs> I'm running out of venereal diseases here. HIV, more STIs, dick rot. <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? In conclusion, PNM, 10 out of 10. This was my PMM perspective. Blue with the blue balls or non-blue balls, out.